people of God. It is a joy to be with you this morning. It is a joy to lead you all in worship this day. A few quick announcements before we begin our time of worship. First, a reminder that today is our harvest potluck lunch, and so I, I had to eat an extra granola bar before I started worship because my stomach was grumbling because of how good the food smelled in the next room over. So please do make sure you stay and, and join in with some uh, fellowship and some food with us all. Um, if you uh, did not bring a dish to pass, that's okay. Bring your wonderful presence and personality, and we will be happy to, uh, to enjoy your company regardless. Um, there's more than enough food to go around. All people will be fed. We will also take some time during that harvest potluck uh, to share some information with you. The leadership team has a slideshow presentation prepared um, to just kind of read you in on some of the, the needs of the building in particular and, and how that ties in with some of the conversations we've been having about Zion Lutheran Church and that sort of thing. And there will be an opportunity to, uh, for you to get some of your questions answered as well. So please make sure that you stay for lunch. Stay for fellowship, get some information as a part of all of that. Um, and for folks who are joining us from home, there will be a Zoom option available for that. So even if you are not able to be here in person, you are welcome to join us in that fashion. In two Sundays, Sunday, November 5th, so next Sunday is the 29th, this is the 5th, there will be a few things for you to mark on your calendars. One, that's daylight savings time. So if you have a clock that needs to be set by a human and doesn't just like do the cell phone clock magic on its own, then make sure you're aware of that, that, that Sunday, November 5th is daylight savings. It's also the first Sunday of the month, which makes it a food pantry donation day. You're always welcome to bring in items to set out here to donate to the food pantry, but especially on the first Sunday of the month, we make a concerted effort to collect as much as we can to share with our neighbors in need. Also on Sunday, November 5th, it's All Saints Day, so we'll have a special time during our service to honor the saints that we're remembering. And it's Prayer Shawl Dedication Sunday, which is extra exciting and perfect for All Saints Day because we can honor the work of the saints who are among us now uh, by dedicating the, the beautiful <coughs> prayer shawls that they've been working so diligently on. Um, so please make sure that you are uh, ready for all of that on Sunday, November 5th. It's Daylight Savings, it's Food Pantry Donation Day, it's Prayer Shawl Dedication Day, and it's All Saints Day all in one. The following Sunday, November 12th, we'll be worshiping together with our friends at Zion Lutheran Church. We will be on site there at Zion Lutheran Church. Uh, for those who were there last time, it'll be very similar that Pastor Charlie and I will share the liturgy kind of back and forth. Um, he's asked that I offer the sermon that morning as well, so um, that'll be me preaching that Sunday. So please make sure that on Sunday, November 12th, you come to church at Zion Lutheran Church. There will be fellowship time afterwards as well. The following two Sundays, the, the 19th and 26th, I will be taking some vacation time, some staycation time, um, and the pulpit will be filled by Reverend Rebecca Laird. Many of you uh, know of her, have heard her preach here in my stead before. She is an absolute gift, and I'm so glad that she said yes so that I can offer uh, her ministry among you all. I think that's it for announcements this morning. <coughs> Excellent. Let's take a few moments then, take a breath, center our hearts, and prepare to worship God as the choir leads us in. <laughs> Oh, 
Amen. Would you join me in the responsive call to worship? We gather in abundance, away from the rush and the race, to celebrate the generous spirit that sings without fear, may all have enough. We gather to live in the word of God's song. We gather in grace, awake to the sin of despair and degradation, awake to the chance to be more and the possibilities seeded within. We gather to grow, to change moment by moment, in grace again and again. We gather in hope, ready to do more than talk, ready to make change one letter, one meal, one home, one gift, and one hand at a time, ready to live and move and be ready to be the change God calls us to be. We gather to give of our time and our talents, our hopes and our energy. We gather to be. Amen. Amen. Would you stand as you're able to join in singing, Come Ye Thankful People, Come. seated and let us join our voices in a prayer of confession. God of all grace, all that we are, all that we have, and all that we will become is a gift from you. Forgive us when we forget this and assume that time and talent are made by us. Forgive us when we pridefully count our earnings rather than delighting in your gifts. 
Remind us of the high calling to be the stewards of your abundance, caretakers of all that you have entrusted to us. Make us faithful with little and also with much, that we may give ourselves as you did, wholly and completely, even unto the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Beloved, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you. invite the children to come join me. I think that means I get Trent and Brandon. And now that I've said their names out loud, they extra have to come. <laughs> My kiddos are all across the hall giving uh, our nursery attendant, Sarah, a run for her money. Hello again, boys. How are you? They're both looking at me like, please don't ask me questions. Please don't make me talk out loud. I am going to ask questions, though. You know how I do, right? Yeah. All right, have you ever had to make a difficult choice? Like between two things? Yeah, like Brandon, you were telling me in Sunday school this morning how you traded a crystal that you really liked for a Pokemon card, right? Was that a tough choice or were you like, yeah, I totally wanna make this trade? It was a tough choice, yeah. Like when you've got two things 
that are really special to you and you have to pick one or the other. Sometimes we have to do that with time, right? Like if you, I don't know how screen time works in your world, but like let's say you have an hour of screen time that you're allowed to have and you have to pick between your Switch and a show you want to watch or a phone. That's a tough choice, right? Like it's, it's hard. We, we're faced with these tough choices all the time. Or if mom or grandma says you can only have one dessert, but there are like three different options, that's a tough choice, isn't it? Oh my gosh, that's my toughest choice for me anyway. So we are faced with tough choices all the time, right? Like even when we're kids, we're, we're faced with tough choices all the time. Jesus knew that the people that were following him when he was walking around on earth were faced with tough choices too. So he gave them a way to think through things. Now this might not help with screen time choices, and it definitely won't help with dessert choices, but it'll help with bigger choices, like the really, really super hard deep life choices. Jesus said that whenever we're faced with a tough choice, the best thing to do is to think about what God would want, to think about what would make God happy. In order to do that, we have to know some stuff about God, right? I'm going to tell you a funny story about my poor sweet husband who's sitting right back there. You can razz him about this afterwards. When he was your guy's age, he, had a, he has a big sister. Her name is Ashley. And Ashley was like into typical teenage girl stuff at the time, right? Like she was really into like things that were pink and princessy and arts and crafts, and she really liked to read a lot like my daughter Sarah. So naturally for Christmas one year, Dana, my husband, gave her Star Wars figurines that were like action figure figurines from Star Wars. She was not excited about that. That was not what Ashley wanted. Dana thought about what Dana would want and then gave her a gift according to that, right? But he didn't think about what Ashley wanted. Have you ever done that with like gift giving, like thought about what you might want or has anyone ever done it to you? Like if I say, I'm going to give you boys each a present for your birthday, and it's going to be a Bible, and it's going to be really thick with teeny tiny print, because that's what I would want. You would be like, Pastor Emily, what are you doing? This is not what I want, right? <laughs> Except more politely, because you're not rude. When we think about the choices we have to make, we have to think about what God wants, which might be different than what we want, right? And so what do we know about God? Is God kind or mean? This is not a trick question. I think you know the answer. Do you want me to like turn off my microphone and you can whisper the answer? He's, he's kind. <laughs> yes, Aiden says he's kind and Aiden's right. And Aiden's a cool guy that you should get to know. He's kind. God is kind. Is God loving or hateful? Yeah. Does God love people more, or does God love things and money more? People. Yeah, you know the answers to these. You know what God is like, right? You've been around me long enough to know what God is like. So when we're, t when we're faced with tough choices, our work is to always make the choice that aligns with kindness and love, what's best for people, and all of those sorts of things. In a few minutes, I'm going to talk with the grown-ups about choosing God over choosing money. That's not as much a kid decision because kids generally don't have access to as much money as grown-ups do. But you can apply the same logic. You can make the same sort of choices in kid life, right? You can choose kindness over bullying. You can choose love over hatred. You can choose helping over hurting. You can choose the things that you know would make God happy every time. So our challenge this week and forever is whenever we're faced with a tough choice, not like a which dessert to choose choice, but like a how to treat others kind of choice, to choose the thing that God would want, which is always the thing that looks the most like love. Make sense? All right, let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for love. Thank you for love. Help, us love. Help us choose love every chance we get. Every chance we get. Thank, you for us, Thank you for loving us no matter what. No matter what. Amen. Amen. Thanks. You can go back.
morning scripture comes to us today from Matthew 6, verses 24 through 34. No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They are ne <clears throat> sorry. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your own span of life. And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? you of little faith. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Here ends the reading. Amen. Amen. All right, friends, we are in week three now of our stewardship series. And so just a quick recap. In week one, two Sundays ago, we heard a message about remembering to count our blessings, about how abundantly blessed we really are. Last Sunday, we were reminded that uh, we are to repent of our sinful ideas and habits when it comes to money, and today we'll hear a message about trusting in God. God has blessed us. We turn from our ungodly money habits, and now we put our trust in God. So let's dive right into the text. These are the words of Jesus. This specific little text doesn't make that clear, but that's what they are. They're the words of Jesus, and they're part of a bigger passage that we refer to as the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount happened very early after Jesus called his disciples to follow him. So there was this group of just kind of miscellaneous tradesmen for the most part, and Jesus went to each of them individually and said, come follow me. I'm going to teach you about faith. I'm going to teach you the scriptures, um, and, and you're going to travel with me and leave everything you've ever known behind in the process. And they did. So early after that, once he had them gathered, they went up onto a mountain, and Jesus started teaching them. There may have been others who heard. There may have been crowds around for some of the teachings. But this was really more of an intimate Bible study setting rather than a corporate Sunday morning worship setting. He was sitting amongst the people that were learning from him and teaching them just the, fu the fundamentals, the foundational stuff of journeying through faith with him. During this Sermon on the Mount, we get other things that we are familiar with, teachings like the Beatitudes, which is the ones that start out, blessed are the, for they shall, blessed are the, for they shall, the Beatitudes. We get the Lord's Prayer, we get other sort of foundational teachings like that. And this is part of that. So this isn't a standalone teaching, it's part of a bigger context. For today's purposes, we'll take it on its own, though. And we'll see what we can kind of glean from this specific little segment. Jesus starts out by saying that no one can serve two masters. Remember, in Jesus' historical context, slavery was normative. That doesn't make it okay under any circumstances whatsoever. And I will start by naming up front that that language can be hard for people to hear. 
It was what it was then. Um, And so Jesus used that as sort of the basis of a metaphor. He says, no one can serve two masters. A slave will either love one and hate the other or hate one and love the other. And then he very quickly brought it into a conversation about something that had nothing to do with slavery whatsoever. He said, no one can serve both God and wealth. Right away, Jesus leaves no question about which masters to whom he is referring. He is talking about God and wealth. No person at all can serve both God and wealth at the same time. At first blush, this ties in well with last week's call for repentance about our ungodly money assumptions and habits and whatnot, right? Whenever we find ourselves turning toward the pursuit of wealth, we must repent and turn instead towards God. I've heard it said that repent literally means turn around. And so if we're walking towards wealth and pursuing wealth, then we must repent and walk instead towards God, pursuing God. It also ties in well, though, with the previous week's message about counting our blessings, especially when we consider what Jesus says next. Now, one of the biggest hang-ups for a lot of people who struggle to turn away from the pursuit of wealth is a fear of fiscal insecurity. And to be clear, the Bible does also teach us to take care of our family's own needs, to be diligent in wealth management. We're not called to recklessness in our fiscal management, but rather we are called to put our trust in God and in the things of the heavenly realm, rather than in money and the things of the physical realm. Jesus explains this in the rest of the passage. He tells his new disciples not to worry about their basic necessities, food, drink, clothing, but to trust instead in God's provisions. Now again, this isn't a call to shirk our responsibilities, but to redirect our hearts. Our financial choices, Jesus teaches, are to be based on what God would want us to do. Rather than, rather than on a fear of what we might not have or a love of the things of this world. In fact, Jesus addresses this fear head on. It's so common. Jesus addresses it head on by reminding his disciples that God meets the needs of animals and plants. How much more so would God meet the needs of God's beloved children? Now, beloved, in a few weeks, I'll be asking you, like I do every year, to name your fiscal commitment to the church. And when we do so, I would invite you, I would beseech you to remember that when you do, God has your best interest at heart. God has our best interests at heart. And the scriptures tell us that when we turn away from a love of wealth, a pursuit of wealth, and turn toward a love of God, All that we need will be given to us. But Stewardship Month is not the only time our allegiance towards God matters. I had a mentor earlier on in my career whose father-in-law happened to be a Methodist preacher. It's one of those small connectional world things. And he would say that he hates Stewardship Month because stewardship is an all-year-round spiritual discipline. It's not as though we should only practice stewardship during October. We should be practicing faithful Christian stewardship all year round. We know through many months of communication through newsletters and a variety of other sources that we are at a a critical point in the stewardship life of our faith community. And so to that end, I would ask you to remember that stewardship is is something we are called to practice beyond two weeks from now when we turn in our pledge cards. This afternoon, when worship is done, we'll share a lunch together. We'll see the abundance of God's blessings, the abundance of harvest, the abundance of good food, the abundance of love and Christian fellowship. And as we wrap up our meal, the leadership team will share some information about the current state of the church building, some of which you can see from where you're sitting. 
While we do so, I beseech us all to remember these truths that we've learned so far in our stewardship series. Truth one, blessings abound. God is so good and so good to us. Blessings abound. Truth two, we are called by the scriptures and by our faith to turn away from sinful ideas and practices about money, including the pursuit of wealth and stuff. And truth free, three, we are called to turn our hearts towards God, who will provide, God will provide for the needs of those who put their trust in perfect holy love, just like God does for the birds, just like God does for the lilies. So much more will God do for us. For all of that, I give thanks to God. Amen. Amen. Would you stand as you're able to join in singing something beautiful? Please be seated as we join in a time of prayer with and for one another. We'll start off the prayer by lifting up the joys and concerns that have come to me uh, both throughout the week and through the prayer book this morning. Uh, Deb is asking for prayers for her family as they grieve the loss of, I think it's her aunt, I didn't write it down and I'm sorry about that, um, as they grieve the loss of a beloved family member. We're asked to pray for Charlie R., who's facing some health is issues, experiencing some health issues. And we're asked to uh, celebrate the fact that all are invited to stay for lunch, even if you didn't come prepared. There's extra food. There's plenty. We're also called upon to pray for a football player who experienced a head injury. I know that's a common concern in the world of college and professional football, and so prayers for quick and complete healing. We're asked to pray for the family who's mourning the death of a 16-year-old um, who died earlier this week. To pray for our nation's leaders and the leaders of the world. The rest of the prayers that have come before me in writing this morning have to do with uh, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine and the conflict in the Middle East. And so I would just call us all to pray for peace and to trust that with God all things are possible, even that which seems impossible to our human hearts and minds. To pray for an end to all violence everywhere, because none of it is the will of God. With that, I invite us to join our hearts together in a moment of prayer. God of grace and mercy and love, 
we give you all our praise. We praise you for you are worthy. We praise you for you are perfect. We praise you for you are good and gracious. We praise you for you are love. God, may it be that we praise you not only with our lips, but with our actions, with our thoughts, with all the choices we make each day and every day, that in all things we would pursue you above all else that you alone would be the one to whom we give our hearts. We confess, O oh God, for the times when that's not the case. We confess that sometimes we chase wealth, sometimes we chase the things of this world, sometimes we forget how very much you love us and that all of our blessings are gifts from you. Even so, we give you thanks, O God, for we know this day that you are blessing us beyond measure. We give you thanks for your mercy and for your forgiveness. We thank you for breaking all the chains that bind us, that we might freely and joyfully serve you. We thank you for the food that awaits us after this service, for the love and fellowship we share among this community. We thank you for all of the ways in which your word calls us to trust in you completely and wholly. And we thank you for your patience as we learn to do just that. We pray for those in special need of your love this day. We pray for healing for all those who are ill or injured, in mind, in body, or in spirit. For comfort for those who are grieving. For protection for those living in fear or in violence. for provision for those who have not their daily bread. We pray for freedom for all who are addicted, imprisoned, and oppressed. And we pray for your church, O oh God, that we might continue to bear your light in a world that seems so dark some days. <clears throat> All these things we pray in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen. Let's take a moment now to live out our prayer by giving back to God a bit of that which God has given to us.
Amen. Please be seated as we join our hearts together in prayer. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to render to you all that we have and all that we are, that we may praise you not with our lips only, but with our whole lives. Turning the duties the sorrows, and the joys of all our days into a living sacrifice to you, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us join our voices together in the prayer Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we look beyond this day to the ways that we can implement our faith throughout the week, one of the things that we can be mindful of is the ways that we make decisions. Just like I talked with the young men during children's time, whenever we have a decision to make, may it be this week especially, but always, that our question at hand and on our minds is, what would God want us to do? In making this decision, what would God want us to do? So that's our challenge this week, is to have that question frame our decision making all week long. And all the while, as we do so, we can trust that no matter what the decision is, God will take care of we who are faithful to him. Let's stand one more time and join in singing, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus.
seated for these words of blessing and the blessing of the music to follow. And then please do join us for lunch in the next room over afterwards. Beloved, as we learn to trust in Jesus above all else, my prayer for each of us this day and every day is that we would experience a fullness of life and rest and joy and peace. And may God bless the food we are about to receive, those who have had a hand in preparing it, and the fellowship among us as we journey on. Amen.